Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about graph ther theory terminology. So some basic terminology that comes up in graph theory. So we're going to start with section 8.2, which is just listing some common graphs and what their names are and um, where they come up. So the complete graph, Kn, is the, the graph on n vertices that has all possible edges between those vertices. So every pair of vertices uh, makes an edge. So here's the complete graph K7 is the graph on seven vertices. Here's seven vertices where we draw every possible edge between all the vertices. So not only just going around the circle, but also all the possible diagonals coming from every vertex to every other vertex. So we've seen this graph in chapter one when we talked about uh, the handshake problem where everybody in the room shakes hands with everybody else and you want to count how many handshakes there are. So we can generalize this, of course, to a complete graph Kn and say how many edges are there where an edge represents a handshake between two people. And so in the in the case of K7, we can say, well, there's there's in order to make an edge, since there's seven people, it involves choosing two of the people. So we can compute seven choose two to count the number of edges. So that's seven times six divided by two, which is 21. So in general, the complete graph Kn is going to have exactly n choose two edges. So it's a graph with n vertices and n choose two edges. There's lots of other important graphs. So two of them are the path graph and the cycle graph. So the path graph, which we write as Pn, is the graph on n vertices that's, that just makes a path of length n. Um, so you just connect them straight across. Whereas the cycle graph is when you connect the first and last points of a path graph to form a cycle. And here's the cycle graph C5. As an, as an example. And another example is a bipartite graph. So this is not one specific example of a graph. It's just a class of graphs that um, has the property that you have a left set and a right set. Um, here I have A, B, and C on the left, and then a bunch of words on the right, apple, berry, acorn, and cherry. And maybe we can draw the graph of where we connect a letter to a word if that letter is in the word. So A is certainly an apple and acorn, but it's not in, in berry or cherry. B is in berry. Um, and C is in both cherry and acorn. So don't forget that C and acorn, even though it's not the first letter of the word. So that's an example of a bipartite graph where we match two different types of objects based on some relation between them. So there's a specific type of bipartite graph that we're, we are interested in called the complete bipartite graph. Um, and let's define bipartite graphs in general first. So a bipartite graph consists of two disjoint sets of vertices L and R. So we have a little left set of vertices and right set of vertices. So that edges only connect things in L to things in R. You can't have an edge between two L's or two R vertices. And the complete bipartite graph, which we write as BNM, is the one in which there's N left vertices and M right vertices, and every possible edge connecting the left and the right is there. So the word complete, again, means every possible edge that you can have, except in this case, we're restricting to the bipartite case. How many edges are there? Well, there's uh, n times m ways of choosing something from the left set and then something from the right set to make an edge. So there are n times m edges in the bipartite graph, BNM. Here's another um, very useful graph ter terminology that comes up in section 8.3 in the book. And that is the degree of a vertex, the number of ad edges adjacent to it. We also mentioned this briefly in chapter one, but now we're coming back to it in the official graph theory chapter. So here's an example of a graph, and you can see this vertex has two edges attached to it. This one has two, this one has three, these both have one, and this center vertex has degree five, five edges attached to it. Now, the main theorem we want to know about degrees is that the sum of all the degrees of a graph, of, of, of the vertices in any graph, must be even. And the reason is that when you add up all the degrees, each degree corresponds to counting all the edges coming out of it. And each edge is counted by two of the vertices. It's two endpoints. So each edge is counted twice when we add up all these degrees. So the sum of the degrees is equal to twice the number of edges. And twice anything is even. Uh, that's the definition of each even, is that it's divisible by two. So we have proven that the sum of the degrees of a graph must be even. And we can use this to eliminate certain graphs. For instance, you can ask, is there a graph on four, four vertices whose degrees are 1, 2, 2, and 4? 
in some order? And you can immediately answer no, because the sum of those, one plus two plus two plus four, that's nine. That's odd. So you're not allowed to have an odd sum of the degrees. Um, so there is no graph with those degrees. Is there a graph with degrees zero, one, two, and three? Well, maybe because the sum is even, but that's actually not enough. So um, even though zero plus one plus two plus three is six, which is even, you can't make a graph with those degrees. Because if we tried to, here's the four vertices with these degrees, Notice that uh, point number three has to be connected to all three other points, but then that means zero is connected to something and that's not good because this is supposed to have degree zero and, and it has at least one edge. That's a contradiction. So there is no graph with, with those degrees, but there is a graph with degrees two, two, three, and three. Now this is something we can't eliminate by saying the sum is odd, the sum is even, so that's good. And there's not necessarily a graph as we saw here, but it turns out in this case, we can draw one. Let's draw a, a square with a diagonal. And you'll notice that the two corners have um, degree two and the corner, the other opposite corners have degree three. And so yes, there is a graph with those degrees. So it's not always obvious, but at least we have this theorem of the sum of the degrees being even to eliminate some of the cases. Now let's look at subgraphs. So here's another important terminology in graph theory. So in section 8.4, we define a subgraph of a graph G with vertex set V and edge set E to be a graph on, the, on a subset of the vertices and a subset of the edges that's compatible. So in other words, you have a subset V prime of V and E prime of E so that every edge in E prime spans between two vertices of V prime. So the way that you can make a subgraph is by deleting some vertices and edges. So when you delete an edge, um, the, the edge just goes away. You don't have to modify anything else. But if you delete a vertex, then you also have to delete every edge connecting to that vertex. It sort of sweeps those all along. And so you can make a subgraph by deleting some edges and vertices in that way. Now let's look at the complement of a graph, which subgraphs are useful for defining. And for this section in graph complements, I want to remind um, us that we're only dealing with simple graphs, so no multiple edges or loops. And any graph on n vertices of this type is, it can be thought of as a subgraph of Kn. So Kn, remember, is the complete graph. And if you, if you have some graph on n vertices, well, you have some of the edges and maybe not all of the edges. So it's a subgraph of Kn. So if G is a subgraph of Kn, with all uh, n vertices that Kn has, and but you have a subset of the edges, E being a subset of all the e edges in Kn, then the complement is formed by taking the, the set of all edges in Kn and subtracting the subset that we started with. So you can see the if the black edges are G, the complement is going to be all these red edges G in G hat um, the red edges are exactly connecting two vertices if they are not connected by a black edge. So one model for this is if you have a bunch of people and some of them are connected on social media, maybe they're friends on some uh, social media platform, then you can draw a black edge if they're connected. Um, and then the complement is, is showing who is not connected to each other, right? And you can study that graph as well to get some information about the system. There's the final edge being drawn, and there's the complement of the graph. So now you try, find a graph on four vertices that is isomorphic to its own complement. So in the graph we drew above, the complement graph had way more edges than the original graph, so it certainly couldn't be the same graph. But sometimes it, it can be done. Sometimes you can have a graph that you take its complement and you really get the same graph up to redrawing it some way. And can you find such a graph on five vertices or six vertices? You know, and, the, and it isn't always possible. In fact, on three vertices, it's not possible to find a graph that's isomorphic to its own complement. Let's see how this works. So if you have three vertices and you draw a graph, well, the graph either has zero, one, two, or three edges. There's only three possible edges you can draw. And we can't have half the edges being in the graph and half being in the complement because there's only three edges in K3. Um, so if you had one, its complement would have two. If you had two, its complement would have one and so on. So you can't have um, a graph on three vertices that's isomorphic to its own complement. 
but try to find one for four and see if you can do it for five and six as well. That's all for today and we'll see you next time.